Let us discover the top 5 richest men in the Philippines according to Forbes in 2020 and the reason behind their success in the world of business. We will find out their difficulties in life when they were young and aspiring to prove themselves as businessmen. Here in Bangsamoro News, you will definitely going to get some knowledge because we believe that knowledge is power. The number five in our list is Mr. Lositan. Businessman Lositan has placed 1,267th as valued at $1.7 billion. The now 87-year-old business tycoon was born in the province of Fuizan in China whose family moved to the Philippines in hope of better fortune when he was still young. As the eldest among his siblings, the young Mr. Tan grew up with a heavy responsibility on his shoulders to help provide for his family. He worked his way through college studying chemical engineering at Far Eastern University in Manila and started taking on different works to earn a living. In one of his uh, early jobs, Mr. Tan worked as a janitor in a cigarette factory. As the owner saw his hard work, he was promoted as a tobacco cook, creating and regulating the product mix and assigned as a tropical leaf dealer thereafter. Using all the knowledge and experiences he acquired from his previous jobs, Mr. Tan in 1966 opened his own cigarette company named Fortune Tobacco. It became successful and was able to expand in the following years. In a span of just nearly 15 years, the company turned to be the largest cigarette manufacturer in the country. From there, Mr. Tan's success likely continued across other industries. In 1977, Mr. Tan acquired the General Punk and Trust Company from the Philippine government for only 500,000. It was later renamed as Allied Bank after about five years, he established and put up the Asia Brewery Incorporated, the only brewery allowed to compete with the market leader San Miguel Corporation. It was able to develop innovative products that were easily patronized by consumers. Mr. Tan didn't stop expanding his business ventures in the coming years. He secured control of the country's flag carrier Philippine Airlines and became a chairman and chief executive officer in 1995. Among others, he also acquired Tanduay Holdings, Philippine National Bank, Itun Properties and the University of the East. In 2012, Mr. Tan consolidated his major businesses under one conglomerate named LT Group Incorporated. According to its website, the LT Group's diversified portfolio of consumer-focused businesses is well positioned to benefit from broad-based growth in the Philippines' economy. As an individual fueled by passion, hard work and perseverance, Mr. Tan has become one of the country's richest men with business interests spanning from banking, airline, liquor, tobacco, real estate and education, among others. Number four in our list is the owner of Lens Global Groups, Andrew Tan, who is also behind brands like Make World, Emperor and the local McDonald's franchise. Settled at the 1,135 rank globally with a $1.9 billion or about 
Han is a son of a poor immigrant from Fujian province. He was born in China, but his family migrated to Hong Kong when he was four years old. In Hong Kong, he and his family used to share a tenement apartment with four other families with only one bathroom and one concrete table for all the family's cooking stove. Due to the high demand of living, at the age of 16, he came to the Philippines to join his father who was then working in Ancestral Radio Factory. Together, they rented a camp 20 square meter apartment in Santa Cruz, Manila. And from his home all the way to CM Recto, the young Andrew preferred to work than ride a jeepney in order to save money when he was studying accountancy at the University of the East. He also often ate banana cube or fried banana during lunch. This is one of young Andrew's difficult periods, but it didn't defeat his dreams. Through his determination, he eventually graduated as magna cum laude. Engineer Conrado Asidelo, himself a self-made man in the air conditioning business, recalls that he and the younger Tan used to be employees of Taipan Leonardo T of Union High Touch, Ajinamoto and other businesses. He remembers Andrew Tan as one of the most hardworking and conscientious employees of the late Leonardo T. Now one of the richest in the Philippines, he engaged in real estate developing condominiums, the Mega World, the world's biggest brandy producer, the Emperor Destiller Incorporated, and the national or nationwide Philippine franchise of fast food chain McDonald's. The number three in our list is the C siblings. Sibling hands with two billion dollars and Herbert with two billion dollars and Harley with 1.9 billion dollars and Henry Jr. with 1.9 billion dollars and Teresita C. Cushion with 1.8 billion dollars and Elizabeth C with 1.6 billion dollars and also made the list having split among themselves the empire built by their father the late SM Mall's founder Henry C Senior. The C siblings were earlier named as the richest in the country during Forbes list back in September, showing a total net worth of 17.2 billion US dollar. Henry C also known as Xi Xi Jing, was born in Xiamen Amoy in Poison in the Republic of China on October 15, 1924. At age 12, he and his family moved to the Philippines where his father set up a shop that sold various household items. At his father's stores, she helped his father sell rice, sardines, and other merchandise. He earned his Associate of Arts degree in Commercial Studies at uh, Far Eastern University in 1950. In his twenties, 
Henry C. became a store manager working for an American business involved in the local shoe industry in the Philippines. He opened his uh, first sole proprietorship store in Manila in 1948. He opened at least three shoe stores in the Pareto area which was then known for its heavy pedestrian traffic. His decision to sell shoes was due to the losses his family experienced in World War II. Thinking that everyone would need shoes following the aftermath of the war. He sold the surplus GI boats and saved finances before he established Shoe Mart in 1958, his own small shoe store in Capo. That marked the beginning of SM Prime. He later encountered difficulties in sourcing shoes locally and decided to import shoes from outside the country. She became involved in the banking industry when he acquired Acme Savings Bank, later named Banco de Oro or BDO in 1967. In November 1972, he opened SM Capo, SM first standalone department store, and entrusted his 22 year old daughter Teresita to run the store. On November 8, 1987, he established his first SM Super Mall, SM City North Itza. In the early 90s, SM started opening more shopping malls with the setting up of two malls in Metro Manila and a solitary mall in Cebu City. SM Prime Holdings was incorporated in 1994 and went public. In 2007, she stepped down as chairman of SM Investment Corporation and was given the honorary title of Chairman Emeritus as recognition for being the founder of the SM Group, who she still succeeded she as chairman. For 11 straight years until his death in 2019, Forbes ranked him as the richest person in the Philippines with an estimated net worth of uh, 13 billion US dollar in 2019. The number two in our list is Enrique Rason Jr. Ports magnet Enrique Rason Jr. is at the 565 spot with a 3.4 billion dollar net worth. He runs the International Container Terminal Services Incorporated, the biggest portyard operator in the country, which also operates other cargo terminal abroad. Rasson's grandfather arrived from Spain in the early 20th century to establish Manila's main port in South Abu. He shares the same name with his father, Enrique Rasson, who built the business through the World War II. In 1987, Rason inherited International Container Terminal Services Incorporated, which grew to become the largest corporation providing container or terminal services in Manila, Subic, Batangas, General Santos City, Poan, and Brazil. In uh, 2010, Henry C. Jr.'s one Taipan acquired 100% of Monte Oro Resources Grid for 350 million US dollar. The company soon became a partnership between Razoon and Walter Brown's E. Brown Company owns 30% of the National Grid Corporation of the Philippines. That same year, Razoon invested an additional 200 million in Blomberry Investments Holding Incorporated. Blumbra is just one of the four gaming companies that were granted casino licenses by the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation, PAGCO, for the 
upcoming entertainment city. Also in the same year, Rason sold Manila Standard for 100 million to later representative Martin Romualdez, whose conglomerate owns the journal group of publications, thus divesting himself from the newspaper business. The number one in our list is the none other than the former senator of the Philippine Republic, Manny Villar. Villar ranked 286 globally with a $5.6 billion fortune. He founded Vista Land and Livescape, a real estate conglomerate that started with building subdivisions. Eventually, venturing into condominiums, malls, convenience stores, coffee chains, and symmetry. The rest of his family is with the government. His wife is Senator Senja Villar, his son is Public Works Secretary Mark Villar, and his daughter Las Piñas Representative Camille Villar. Manuel Bamba Villar Jr. was born on December 13, 1949 in Thondo an impoverished and densely populated district of Manila. He was the second born of the nine children of his parents and a poor family. As a child, Villar initiated attended uh, Isabelo de los Reyes Elementary School, a nearby public school in Tondo. He also assisted his mother in Stealing shrimp and fish at the Divisoria public market. As early as age six, in order to help earn the money to support his siblings and himself to school. However, accompanying his mother interfered with his education and he was forced to drop out from school during grade one. Villa finished his high school education at the Mapua Institute of Technology in Santa Cruz adjacent to Tondo. He attended the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and earned his bachelor's degree in business administration in 1970. He returned to the same school to earn his master's degree in business administration in 1973. In 1975, with an initial capital of 10,000, Villa Pritchis two reconditioned trucks and started a business delivering sand and gravel for construction companies in Las Piñas. This eventually segued into building houses as Villa took out a seven-year loan from a rural bank offering low interest rates. From the loan, he kick-started building and selling homes at his first project. Camellia Homes, page 1 and 2 in Las Piñas. Initially with 160 units and would have resulted to be the country's largest home building company with an emphasis on low price mass housing. A notable innovation of Villas companies was to sell house and lot packages when the common practice at the time was to sell lots for future homeowners to build upon. This is as an idea to service. I wish the video made you happy and thank you very much for watching it and for your support. Until next time.